renewable energy. Basically, it is a source whereby when replenished, it can never be replaced in portions and when depleted, the same kind of thing that way. Welcome, this is SNB topical discussion. We engage about renewable energy, understanding the resources around there. I do understand the biomasses, the solar uh, energy there, geoma uh, geometrical power around there. But with experts today, we're going to understand more on the capacity that Uganda holds about renewable energy and how important that is towards our economy. And away from there as well, we will also be looking at how uh, bioenergy is very important in the country and what it adds up towards uh, sustainable development and sustainable living that we look forward to towards uh, this inflation generation. And this is basically generated from organic matter and also known as uh, biomass. Basically everything from plants and also timber and agriculture. Wouldn't you look forward to de definitely know something about that? And also joining me now is um, experts from uh, that is Ministry of Energy Mineral Development Dr. Mokisa Nicholas who is a researcher renewable energy and uh, Mr. Chimuli Godfrey who is a senior energy officer in the bio division a warm welcome gentlemen thank you for joining us this morning this is uh, Dr. Mokisa and his Mr. Chimuli Godfrey thank you so much Dr. Mok uh, Mokisa so let's begin with you by giving us at least a general overview about um, uh, the renewable energy. You're a researcher. What does the research findings say about the capacity now and how we're moving? Thank you very much, Rita. Uh, Uganda is uh, well in, uh, endowed with a lot of renewable energy resources. Mm -hmm. One, if we just look at the solar potential in Uganda, by virtue of this location along the equator, Uganda has solar radiation throughout the year. Our potential is about 5.1 kilowatt hour per square meter. That's to say, for every um, a square meter you have, mm. you can at least have, you expect to generate about 5.1 kilowatt hours of solar. Mm. If you look at the, our hydro potential, Uganda has one of the highest potentials in Africa, I think after the Congo Basin. If you look at the narrow resource potential we have, Uganda has over 4,500 megawatt potential of hydro. Mm -hmm. That's large hydro and 650 megawatt potential. Mm -hmm. Geothermal, we have about three, uh, 450 from geothermal sources. For wind, we have about 300 potential. So we have a diverse potential from all the different renewable energy sources. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is basically why Uganda is looking at exploring these resources because these are uh, they, they will never run out of them. Mm. We will always be there. The sun is going to shine to mankind, you know, ends, and uh, the rivers will be flowing. Mm. Yeah. So they, therefore, it goes back to what I said earlier. They can never be depleted Absolutely. after that. Doctor, uh, Mr. Chimoli, how are you doing this morning? Please also give us an overview of uh, the bio, um, biodiversity, bioenergy in the country. How do we stand? Yeah, thank you very much, Rita. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you'll find that uh, Uganda uh, relies on biomass energy in most of the energy demands that are made. Biomass energy supplies close to 90%, that's around 88 to 89% of total energy consumed in the country, which means that there is a very big demand and pressure placed on, on biomass resources mm -hmm. and energy as well. Um, we see that uh, biomass resources, the trees, the plants, the water, we are being depleted at a higher rate because of the increasing demand for biomass energy to supply the, the, the yeah, that demand for energy. Mm -hmm. And it's against uh, dwindling resources. I mean, in this case, it actually becomes, tends to be unsustainable mm -hmm. because of the, the decrease that's happening because of the, the demand is higher than what is being produced. 
So in, th in that case, biomass, which is, uh, which is believed to be sustainable, or rather renewable, tends to be non-renewable because it's being depleted without replenishment. However, this biomass is a renewable energy and can supply whatever energy demands are there. How, what is the worry instead? It's like we should be worried if the demand is there and then we're using it as a very rapid uh, resourcing. What do we need to know about worrying about that? Yes, we need to understand that, um, for instance, if I turn, if I go to the consumption uh, sectors, mm -hmm. we need to know that, uh, like I said, 80% of energy consumed is biomass. So mostly cooking, for instance, mm -hmm is done using biomass energy sources, the charcoal, the firewood. So that's what that's what, what is uh, placing a lot of pressure on the available sources. What we need to understand is that actually there has not been too much of a deliberate effort. Mm -hmm. Even by I'm sorry to say even by government <laughs> to replenish these resources. Why are you sorry? Because you're working for government. <laughs> of course we have been in the forefront of <laughs> encouraging people to use this resource sustainably mm -hmm. and in a rational manner. But uh, our efforts are really uh, not at, at that level where you would say that no, we are now at a sustainable basis. Mm -hmm. So, but recently the Minister of Agriculture, no, no, Minister of Water and Environment mm -hmm. came out with a program, mm -hmm. what they call forestry something. I don't remember, I exactly remember. Mm. But it, it coincides with a forestry day, which was sometime in... Uh, that was, uh, well, it happened in February. Yeah, February. Yeah, so with that, they are trying to, to, to enhance the, 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 the supply of this resource by making people okay, plant then. trees, mm. government agencies. Let me cut you short there. I'm going to definitely get back to you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, I mean, Mr. Chimoli there. But let's cross to Dr. Mokisa to let us know about what we need to know about renewable um, resources. How important are they? You talked about wind. It, fe it felt like when you were telling me about uh, wind, I felt like it is very important that we're going to even export it. Like we're exporting maybe the solar energy. Please, what can we know about the importance of all this and the capacity they can actually take this economy far? Uh, talking about uh exporting and the likes mm. uh, in uh, there is a quote I love uh, it was made by a gentleman called John Ginther mm, mm, mm. it was made in the year 1955 and he mentions that Uganda in the marrow of tropical Africa may become one of the world's greatest exporters of electricity mm. and his perspective was mainly backed by by then it was made a hydro power resource that was uh, focused on. So he looked at that and said, I be he believed that one day you're going to export electricity. By then there was no much work on a development of solar, mm -hmm. development of wind and these other technologies. And today, here we are, besides exporting, uh, having been exporting to Kenya and a few other East African countries, Uganda is exploring its resources. Currently, Uganda has over 65 megawatts of solar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a power plant in Soloti, we have one in Toro and uh, Kawasoke. Mm -hmm. We also have a small one of uh, 5 megawatts in Sistema University. And some, uh, some other small uh, systems that have been installed around the country. Why renewable is very important for this country is we all concerned about our climate. Mm -hmm. Climate change is the topic. If you go back to the uh, a conference of parties that happened in Pali in the year, in a, which is COP21, the agenda was how we combat climate change. Mm. And one of the way forward was to uh, develop renewable energies. Mm. Today, you must have heard about transition, mm. energy transition. We're trying to move from a uh, highly polluting energy sources to non polluting energy sources. And what do you mean there for the view of Also, the polluting, the polluting sources, uh, energy sources are like uh, oil, the mm -hmm. fossil-based energy sources. Mm -hmm. So we have oil and gas, we have coal. Mm -hmm. Those kind that really emit carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, 
because the problem is about the, the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And as we uh, in, if, uh, pollute our environment, the accumulation of this gas, uh, these gases, which we call greenhouse gases, results in global warming. Mm -hmm. So one, the, uh, the objective was to uh, limit global warming to two degrees above the pre-industrialization level mm -hmm. and try to limit it to 1.5. So every country has its commitments to this agreement, the Paris Agreement, and every country has committed to, transi to, to have a transition its energy production. Mm -hmm. And well, Uganda has about 92.5% of electricity generated from renewable sources which is mainly backed by hydro the solar as the second generator. Mm, at least we, we, we know that uh, it can never be uh, depleted. Yes. We can use as far as we want. Yeah. But how true is that with electricity here? Should we be comfortable that we can use as much as we want and then it will worry and concern? Well, absolutely. Uh, if you look at, uh, we've, we've had hydropower mm -hmm. since the year 19. 54, mm -hmm. when the Queen inaugurated the uh, oil force dam, mm -hmm. we've had hydro here. Mm -hmm. Besides the challenges we had in the late 70s, the 70s towards the mid 80s, <coughs> where we had uh, wars, you know, there was instability, so that there was poor maintenance of the power plants. Mm -hmm. And the initial capacity of 180 came down to 60 because there was no maintenance over that period. Mm -hmm. And uh, when government, the NRM, and NRA government came to power, it had to start, we had to start with rationing of electricity, cutting down, to not try to balance. And then more power plants were uh, developed and you know, established. So we've had water flowing for years. Mm -hmm. And water is not going to stop flowing here tomorrow. tomorrow. Water is available here, it's raining mm -hmm. all over. At, at least we're sun, confident about water yeah. and sand yeah. and uh, wind, yes. but electricity. Yeah. I, I, because why am I focusing on electricity? Because mm -hmm. it has got <coughs> input it has got human activity input yeah what sh is it going to be okay is there a part where we're going to think that electricity is going to like you said mm. the capacity because of maintenance went mm. down at some point yeah. so do we see this happening again i i do not envision this i've given the factors okay. that lead to this mm. which was basically instabilities in the country mm. so there was political mm. instability and you know when there's instability there's no business the economy goes down mm. and uh, i think that's one of the reasons maybe unless there is a calamity maybe there's a you know so we have... should stand still and be fine. thank you so much uh, doctor we cross mm. back to mr chimuli about uh, bio um, mm. bioenergy in the country yeah. we were still discussing about the worry and uh, one of the things you highlighted at least from you said it yourself you have not done enough <laughs> what is so confidence this time that you're going to do something Um, yeah, I'm confident that something is now going to be done because uh, I can say officially mm -hmm. yeah, a government agency has come out uh, open mm -hmm. with a program of enhancing uh, the replenishment of biomass resources mm -hmm. which are being depleted. They even say at a faster rate. Mm -hmm. So they have come out, Ministry of what? Water and Environment, mm -hmm. to say that nationwide there is a uh, uh, that replen replenishment happening. Ministry of Energy is also coming out with uh, different measures to ensure that biomass use is not uh, overly uh, disruptive mm -hmm. or yeah, destructive because we are coming out with improved technologies, more efficient technologies, uh, other diverse biomass fuel resources mm -hmm. from biomass itself but more advanced resources, I can say, mm -hmm. or modern resources, which also add to their rational utilization of mm -hmm. the resource. So, as about, you say, uh, okay, yeah. the worries are being, I think, addressed. Okay. Yeah. About utilization, uh, Mr. Chimuli, let us speak related to Ugandans, how they are operating now, they are kind of living majority are joining with firewood majority are using charcoal like you say and then we want to introduce them to this kind of technologies to integrate uh, using with gas 
how risky is it going to be for Ugandans and also what are you doing to educate the mass about this? Are there any programming strategies so far late? When are we going to achieve this? Is there a plan to make sure that by this time we're going to cut off charcoal and every homestead at least is going to have this? Take us through what your plan is. Uh, the ministry has, and has been uh, promoting several programs of adopting, of creating awareness mm -hmm. of about the, the, the risks, the dangers associated with uh, the normal way that people have been using uh, biomass, mm? the depletion, health issues, climate issues, environmental issues, all that, all of those are being uh, considered when the ministry is, is promoting these uh, advanced or more efficient technologies. So there, has been, uh, there have been uh, <coughs> programs to promote efficient technologies nationwide even through institutions and encouraging uh, civil society organizations mm. to take up uh, to, 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 because it cannot be done solely by government. Mm. So the private sector also comes in with a, a very good helping hand to ensure that what government starts is advanced more rapidly in, if in, in areas where maybe it may be a bit difficult for Mm. government uh, teams to reach easily because you cannot actually work, work it out all alone. Mm -hmm. So the private sector is also involved in advancing these uh, more efficient technologies in terms of equipment mm -hmm. and in terms of uh, the diversified biomass fuel resources. Mm -hmm. They are involved in promoting those in creating awareness and building capacity Okay. Or in those technologies. And, and at least we have a, a researcher here, Dr. Mokisa. What do you have to share about the adoption culture that you have visioned out as a researcher? How this is going to work and be transparent in a country like Uganda, more so competitively on the African continent? Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the challenges that uh, we have in the sector. Mm -hmm is uh, our people do not do not spend or do not uh, do not look at clean energy or do not mind what source of energy they use as long as they are at the end they achieve a target for instance people do not bother if they if they are affected their breath is affected because of using uh, uh, because of inhaling carbon monoxide or uh, these are uh, bad uh, gases but as long as their food is ready so someone won't mind using wood or charcoal but the consequences of such are big mm -hmm. but so the, what we have to do at the moment is uh, mm -hmm. one of the aspects that we have to draw, uh, look at is awareness mm -hmm. we have to sensitize our people mm -hmm. about clean cooking people have a, uh, a say that food prepared uh, using gas does not taste. Teoma. Uh huh. Teoma. That made him from you know. And uh, I think that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. So there is a need for awareness drives campaigns mm -hmm. to tell people why actually we need to advance <coughs> and move to modern cooking technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is uh, what the, the government is doing is there is funds and you know money put up. There is a Uganda uh, Uganda Energy quality capitalization campaign. Mm -hmm. This is a government campaign that really mm -hmm. gives out uh, finance or that uh, uh, that ho handles finances, fi finances from uh, partners, mm -hmm. from government and private sector. Mm -hmm. And it gives out uh, gov uh, banks to give out soft loans to people who are really taking loans specifically for the energy sector. Mm -hmm. So all these things, if we put this information to the public for people to know that these services and this is available, it should be easier. And another way that government actually is doing this, uh, government has adopted what we call, there was a, it's called National Renewable Energy Platform. Mm -hmm. The National Renewable Energy Platform was uh, inaugurated last year on the 23rd of November. And its agenda is to bring together stakeholders. Mm -hmm. The sector, the energy sector, is constituted of uh, 
everyone, mm. you inclusive. Mm. And it's unfortunate that the media does not see itself as a big player in the sector. <laughs> uh, besides being a media personality, mm. you also cook, you also lie on I energy. do cooking, I do everything. Yeah, and everything mm -hmm. we're using here in the studio is powered by energy. Mm. So, we, we, there's renewable energy platform that's being put together stakeholders. Mm. Because government cannot do all this by itself, as Mr. Chimul mentioned. Mm. It can't do all this in isolation. Mm. So what we need is that the private sector brings its voice, the government comes in as a policymaker, mm. institutions, we from the academia, the researchers, we need to come out and air out our concerns. Mm. Because there's a lot we disc we've you know, discovered, we would recommend for policy uh, review, but unfortunately it ends up on the shelves of our universities. So there is that kind of engagement that is building up in the ministry, mm. that stakeholders are coming together, and of course maybe later we'll discuss some of the other truly because we will return about. to discuss that after the break we take a very quick one we return and the talk about discussion continues on how important is uh, renewable uh, resources but mostly the transparency and transition of bioenergy in the country how is it going to work for ugandans uh, stick around with us we return with more discussions on why you need to abandon the use of charcoal and the use of firewood adopting the bioenergy.